In this example problem, we have a steam power plant that produces 210 megawatts of power that operates on a simple, ideal Rankine cycle. Steam enters the turbine at 10 megapascals and 500 degrees Celsius and is cooled in the condenser at a pressure of 10 kilopascals. Show the cycle on a TS diagram with respect to the saturation lines and determine the quality of the steam at the exit, the thermal efficiency of the cycle, and the mass flow rate of steam. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to draw, draw a TS diagram along with a diagram of the cycle itself. So I have here a pump, a boiler, a turbine, and a condenser. State one is this is the um, the saturated liquid water going into the pump. State two is coming out of the pump going into the boiler at a high pressure compressed liquid. State three is coming out of the boiler as a superheated vapor. State four is coming out of the turbine uh, as a slightly superheated vapor or a high quality saturated mixture. And then state one, go get again some process four to one. There's going to be latent heat rejection in order to condense the steam back to liquid. So here I have Q in, here I have work out, here I have work in. And again, this uh, we'll go ahead and draw a TS diagram. Temperature y axis, entropy x axis with a saturation curve. We have the lower pressure line that at 10 kilopascals and the upper pressure line at 10 megapascals. Again, state one to state two is isotropic compression for the ideal cycle. State two to state three, constant pressure heat addition. State three to state four, Isotropic expansion, state four to state one, isentropic heat rejection. So we're going to go ahead and uh, analyze each of the states to try to get their enthalpies. The first, the first step is getting the quality of steam. So we'll go ahead and start at state one. I'm sorry, not state one, uh, at state three, since we're trying to get the quality of the steam coming out of the turbine. Well, state three, we're given the pressure, which is 10 megapascals, and we're given the temperature of the steam going into the turbine at 500 degrees Celsius. With that, we can get H3, which is 3,375.1 kilojoules per kilogram. And we'll go ahead and we'll get the entropy, which is 6.5995 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Now, with that, we can go right to state four. So this, again, this is state three. We can go to state four, which is, which is uh, going to be the isentropic state coming out of the turbine since it's an ideal cycle. There we have the pressure is 10 kilopascals, and we have the entropy at state four equal to the entropy at state three. That allows us to get the um, the enthalpy, which is 2,800, sorry, 2,089.7 kilojoules per kilogram. And with that, we can get the quality, which is 0 0.79. So that completes part A, trying to find the quality. Now let's go ahead and let's continue um, and get the enthalpies at state one and state two as well, which is what we'll need in order to do part B, which is to find the thermal efficiency of the cycle. So state one, we have the pressure 
10 kilopascals, and it's entering, that's the state entering into the pump, which is uh, going to be a qual, which is going to be a saturated liquid. From there, we get the enthalpy, which is 191.8 kilojoules per kilogram. And we can get the entropy at state one. And we can go ahead and go to state two isotropic. Now, there's two, like I said, there's two ways to treat an isotropic pump. One is to get the entropy, right, and uh, coming out of the, going into the, into the pump and setting it equal to the entropy coming out. So if you go ahead, state two, you can set the entropy at state one equal to state two to get the enthalpy at state two coming out of the pump. Or what you can do is go ahead and compute the um, isentropic work of the pump by using the approximation of nu delta P and set that equal to H2S minus H1. And what you can do is, is solve, use this equation to solve directly for H2, which if you were to do it this way, you would get the same number, which would be 209.1 kilojoules per kilogram. Now we have all the enthalpies. We have H3, H4, H1, and H2 isentropic. And H4, I'm sorry, H4 would be H4 isentropic. From there, we're going to go ahead and we're going to find the uh, efficiency and also the mass flow rate of steam in this cycle. So the network per mass would be Q in minus Q out, where Q in would be H3 minous H2. If you were to go ahead and take those two differences in enthalpy, you'd get 3,173.2 kilojoules per kilogram. We can get Q out, which would be H4 minus H1. That would get you 1897.2 kilojoules per kilogram. And then your net work, which would be Q in minus Q out would give you a value of 1,275.4 kilojoules per kilogram. So with all those knowns, we can get the efficiency as one minus Q in over Q out. We get an efficiency of 40.2%. And then also we can compute that the network. So we have the, the uh, network coming out of the cycle, which was given to us as 210 megawatts or 210,000 kilowatts. That has to equal the mass flow rate times the network, right? So the mass flow rate times the network, the network, uh, the specific network, the network per mass, I'm sorry, which is 1,275.4 kilojoules per kilogram. You do that math and you end up with a mass flow rate of 164.7 kilograms per second. So what I wanna do now is I want to go ahead and take this a step further and to try to compute the, um, basically to recompute the efficiency of the cycle and to recompute the mass flow rate, if the uh, taking into account the fact that the isentropic efficiency of the pumps drop from 100%, which in this ideal cycle, right, we have the iso um, an isentropic um, an isentropic compression process and an isentropic um, uh, expansion process, I want to replace that with an isentropic efficiency of 85%, and to see what happens to to the the cycle efficiency and to the mass flow rate, right? So we want this, basically, what we're gonna do is, is that we're gonna repeat this problem, assuming an isentropic efficiency of 85% for both the turbine and the pump. So basically the problem is, is that we still have the same power plant and we still want it to produce the same amount of power, 210 megawatts. 
but if the efficiencies of the turbine and the compressor drop from 100% to 85%, what happens to the overall cycle efficiency as well as what happens to the mass flow rate needed in order to maintain that same power output of 210 megawatts. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and redraw the TS diagram just to make sure everyone that you uh, understand where I'm going with this. So again, we have two constant pressure lines, right? This is at 10 kilopascals and this is at 10 megapascals. We have, we'll still assume saturated uh, liquid going into the pump, but instead of this isentropic process, we actually have a non isentropic process where the enthalpy coming out is going to be higher than the isotropic enthalpy out. Then we have Q in to state three, and normally we have state three down to state four isentropic, but instead, we have an isentropic efficiency of 80%. So the actual enthalpy coming out of the turbine will be higher than what it was if it were um, isen, uh, as compared to what it would be if it were isentropic. So let's go ahead and do this, right? We know that, again, I'll rewrite it for state one from the prior problem. Uh, we know that state one is at 10 kilopascals and a quality of zero. So if we recall from that, we were able to get the enthalpy, the specific volume, and the entropy. So I'll just go ahead and write those values in. Again, this is, this is already done in the previous problem. Now, we're going to take into effect, we're going to take into account that the isotropic efficiency of the pump is 85%, right? And that is going to be H2 isentropic minus H1 over H2 actual minus H1, right? The isentropic work over the actual work, where the isentropic work of the pump can be approximated as nu delta P. Now, I'm going to show you both ways, right, on how to handle the isentropic efficiency of the pump for both assuming isotropic work to be nu delta P or delta H isentropic. Of course, for your homeworks and for the exam, you don't have to do it both ways. I'm just showing this to you for illustration effect. So the first method, we're going to assume the isentropic work as nu delta P. You'll find that it's a much quicker way of handling the problem. What I'm trying to find is the actual enthalpy coming out of the um, coming out of the uh, pump, because what I want to do is recalculate my Q in and my Q out to recalculate my efficiency based on the fact that in this case, I had H2 isentropic and H4 isentropic. This will get replaced with H2 actual and H4 actual. So I want to be able to calculate that. So if I use this, I will get that H2 actual equals H1 plus new one delta P over the efficiency, which is 85%. Now with this, I have H1, I have nu1, I have P2, which is given to me, P1 is given to me, and nu, which is given to me. I can go ahead and calculate H2 actual pretty directly without even looking at state two, because I already know the pressure. So I can just put P2 into that equation. The other method the other method would be to take the isentropic state coming out of the pump. So I would have the pressure at state two of 10 megapascals of S2 um, is equal to S1. I'll go ahead and calculate, or I mean, find my H2 isentropic. I would use my efficiency equation as H2 isentropic minus H1 divided by H2 actual minus H1. In this case, I have H2s, I have H1, and I have the efficiency. So I can go ahead and I would calculate my H2 actual 
to be 203.6 kilojoules per kilogram. So it's basically the same thing. Uh, the difference is 203.6 versus 203.7. Okay, so again, when you do the when you guys do your work, you don't have to use both methods. I just illustrated both so that you know you get the same answer. All right, we're still in track. We're tr we're still trying to get our enthalpies here. So we'll go back to state three. If you pull it from the prior problem, you get that P three is uh, ten megapascals, and T three is five hundred degrees Celsius. I can use those values to get H three which is 3375.1. Again, this is a repeat from the prior problem, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining. Um, so I'll just go ahead and write the numbers down. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get the state for isotropic, which again is the same as the prior problem. So P4, 10 kilopascals. Set the entropy at state four equal to the entropy at state three. I get H4 isentropic of 2089.7. And again, that is the same as the prior problem. And if you remember, we got a, um, if you do that, you get a quality of 0.79. Now that's if it were isentropic. Now, if you take into account the turbine efficiency, turbine efficiency is actual work over isentropic work. Go ahead and use that to solve for H4 actual. H3 minus efficiency times H3 minus H4 isentropic. I have H3, I have the efficiency, and I have H4 isentropic. I can solve for H4 actual, and I get 2282.5 kilojoules per kilogram. And if I were to look at state four actual, I can need two properties. So I get the pressure again. The pressure doesn't change. The pressure coming out of this turbine is still 10 kilopascals. And if I were to use the actual enthalpy as my second property, you can see that the quality coming out, the actual quality coming out as is compared to the isotropic, the quality coming out for the isentropic process, the quality is um, higher. So the quality is about 87% coming out of the turbine for the actual process as compared to it being 79% coming out for the isentropic process. Now, to finish up the problem, we're going to go ahead and recompute the efficiency. So again, um, our Q in would be H3 minus H4 actual. So that gives us a... Uh, uh, a, Q, a Q in of 3171.4 kilojoules per kilogram. Q out, which would be H4 actual. I'm sorry, that's H3 minus H2 actual. So I made a little mistake there. So Q in would be H3 minus H2 actual, and Q out would be H4 actual minus H1. That is 2090.7 kilojoules per kilogram giving me a net work, Q in minus Q out of 1080.7 kilojoules per kilogram. So my efficiency, one minus Q out over Q in, actually decreases to 34.1%. And when I compute the, so I have the work rate, which is 210 megawatts, equals the mass flow rate times the specific work, which is 1080.7 kilojoules per kilogram. If I recalculate the mass flow rate, it is 194.3 kilograms per second. So it's interesting that starting at an efficiency for the ideal cycle of 40.2% with a mass flow rate of about 165 kilograms per second, if the isotropic efficiencies for the pumps drop from 100 to 85 percent, the overall cycle efficiency drops from 40 percent, um, from about, let's go back, and uh, from about 40 percent to about 34 percent, and the mass flow rate increases from about 165 kilograms per second to 194 
kilograms per second in order to maintain that same 210 megawatt power output. 